2 Corinthians 4, 13. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. So this is a continuation of what we talked about last week. We have the same spirit of faith according to what is written. I believed and therefore I spoke. The word confess literally means to repeat what you know. Uh, if, it's in, if it's in the sense of law, to confess means to, to tell the court exactly what you know. Um, to confess Jesus is to say, I know Jesus and I'm going to tell you what I know. Um, I've been saved. I've been through this. God relieved me of this. God saved me of this. God took this away from me. God gave me this. I'm going to repeat what I know. And, and if we know Jesus Christ, he is saying, that is the reason we confess him. I believed and therefore I spoke. The reason we share these things with you, he's talking to the Corinthians, but the reason we go out and share with others is because we have this knowledge this, this knowledge of the saving grace of Jesus Christ for our lives, here and now and for all eternity. And because, that, because of that, we are to go out and share it, knowing that those who hear us and believe, not us, but believe the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit speaks to them, as a result of our testimony, as a result of our confession, um, we're, we're, we become, um, uh, we become common um, recipients, common um, heirs to the grace of Jesus Christ. So that when we get presented, everyone that we've had an opportunity to share with who's received also gets presented. We don't do the saving, but we plant seeds and water seeds. God gives an increase. And on the judgment day, we all, we all get presented together. Um, that's the, you know, the wonderful thing about the story of, the, of the, the workers. You know, the man that went out and hired some guys first thing in the morning and then went out again at noon and went out again early in the afternoon and went out again later in the afternoon. Everybody got paid the same. Doesn't mean that everybody gets exactly the same reward in heaven and we're not going to go chase those verses down this morning but it means we all get presented we all go with the sheep or we all go with the goats we're all going to go with the sheep together with those who share the gospel and those who hear and receive the gospel for all things are for your sakes all these things that we're going through all these all these um all these um, trials. trials, all these tribulations that we're going through in order to get the gospel in front of you is for your sakes, that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. And that grace has to be spread by us. Now the Holy Spirit grants that grace and the grace is made possible by the atoning death of Jesus Christ. But we are the ones that spread the good news. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How shall they hear if no one tells them? Um, like Brother David says, God doesn't send angels down here to go around saying, hey, receive the gospel. Receive. He sends us to do that. He sends us to do that. So that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. What does it say over in the 15th chapter of Luke? Every time somebody repents, uh, it says the angels, the, all the angels rejoice. And, and it, I love the way it's written because it almost kind of creates this mental picture that, you know, somebody makes an announcement, hey, so-and-so repented, and all the angels drop what they're doing and, and, you know, stop to rejoice when one is saved. Abounding to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. 
Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. We do not lose heart, and I, and I see this on a couple of levels. We came, we shared the gospel, many of y'all received it, you formed a church, a body of believers, a body of saints in Corinth. It's been a rocky road. This is the second letter I've had to I've written. Actually, it's the third letter I've written. I've, this, I'm fixing to come make my third visit. Um, but because I know that many will hear and many will receive and many will persevere and many will appear when I appear on the judgment day in front of the judgment seat of God and get to go with the sheep, we do not lose heart. And it would be easy to lose heart. Uh, Brother David will, will um, confirm this. Most of the guys that we get to know in the county jails get out and they say, I'm never coming back. I'm in the Word of God now. I'm going to go find a church. I'm going to marry my girlfriend. I'm never coming back. And we see him back six months later, a year later, two years later. Uh, here a little while back over in one of the county jails, um, Randall said, he said, I'm not here to step on anybody's toes, but if this is your very first time to be in jail, and it was 15, 16, 17 men in the room, if this is your very first time to be in jail, raise your hand. Not, not a single hand, not a single hand went up. But we don't lose heart. And I say this and I believe, I believe I mean it. If I, if I, if I go over to Bastrop every Friday night for the next 15 years or as long as I'm physically able to do that, and one person ultimately because of a seed that God gave me to plant or water, God gives an increase in one life and one person ends up spending eternity in heaven rather than in hell, it will have been more than worth whatever time and effort and and gasoline and being there when I didn't really feel like it. I, more than worth it. So we do not lose heart. The other side of this is even though our outward man is perishing, regardless of the price we're paying, regardless of the fact that we keep get running out of town, we keep getting flogged, we keep having courts pass judgment on us, we keep getting rejected, we keep getting spit on, we keep... We don't lose heart. Even though the outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. If, it's like Miss Ruth. If we, will, if we will stop focusing on the pain and the frustration and the not wanting to be here and focus on the, the voice of the Holy Spirit that's in us and guiding us and directing us, um, um, Thursday, the Wednesday, the last day that she was lucid, she was singing. We weren't singing with her. She was just bursting out in song. Uh, and nobody entered that room that day and left that room without being prayed for by Miss Ruth. Um, because, again, the inward man being renewed day by day, she was allowing the inward person, the person that is led and filled by and, and receiving from the Holy Spirit to be the person that everybody saw. Verse 17, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And you know, his light affliction is spending time in a Roman prison, dirt floored Roman prison, uh, being beaten, being flogged, being shipwrecked. Uh, and he says, of course, over in Romans in the eighth chapter, he says, I do, not consider, I do not consider the tribulations of the present age worthy of comparison with the glory that, the, that awaits those who wait the Lord. And it's for a moment. 
it's, it's going to come, it's going to go. And once it's gone, we can't go back and say, oh, 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 boy, I wish I had taken the time to talk to so-and-so. I wish I would taken the time to do this. I wish I had prayed more. I wish I had whatever. Um, we need to do that now. We need to not lose sight of that. We do not look at the things that are seen, which is, but the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporary. Everything we see, everything we see, we look around, everything we see is going away. It's temporary. It doesn't matter how hard we worked on it. It doesn't matter how much blood and sweat we put into it. If we built it, if we, if we can put our hands on it, it is going to be gone. It is temporary. But... What we can't see, the eternal world, the, the spiritual world around us is eternal, is forever. Um, and we do not lose heart because we do not lose sight of that fact that what we invest in eternity, what we invest in other people's lives, to change their lives, what we invest in spreading the gospel, what we invest in blessing others, what we invest in walking in those works that God has prepared for us and will tell us about if we will ask him those things. How does Jesus say it? He says, do not lay up your, for yourself treasures on earth where moths eat and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal. Rather lay up treasures in heaven spiritual treasures. They are not seen, but they are eternal. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared for us this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. There's a verse I looked up earlier in the week. I don't remember where it is now. But there is a verse that, that talks about, uh, that describes us as stones. It says, Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone, and each one of us is a stone um, being added to that, being added to that temple. <laughs> And, and, and it certainly says that we are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in us. If anyone defiles that temple, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple we are. But if this tent, this house, this vessel, this flesh and blood is destroyed, and it will be, we're going to die this is all going to rot away. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Jesus says, I go and I prepare a place for you. Uh, most people like to quote the, new, the King James Version there, I go and prepare a mansion for you. We really, we really like that. Uh, the Greek says, I go and I prepare a place for you. And if I prepare a place for you, I shall return that where I am, you may be also. So we don't, we should not get too hung up on when we're going to die, how long we're going to live. We shouldn't even get hung up on how much this, this testimony, th these works God has given us, is going to cost us. Some people, it is going to cost them their lives. Um, there are people that God calls to be missionaries, to go into places where to be caught spreading the gospel is a capital offense. And there are people who lose their lives in the, in, the, in the prime of life, right? What we would call the prime of life for having spread the gospel. For having a Bible in our possession. For, for being accused of believing in Jesus. And yet, and yet, if we have done any of the work that God has given us to do, to do it is not in vain. And it doesn't matter how old we are or how young we are. 
when God calls us home. Because if we have walked in the Spirit, if we have placed our faith and our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, if we have confessed Him, when this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal building, an eternal home that will never go away. And, and I think the more we understand that, and the more we believe that, because it's true whether we believe it or not, but the more we eternalize that, and the more we are focused on that, the more, the less we're going to get wrapped around the axle about the things that go on day to day in our lives here, and the more we're going to look forward to the day when we get to go home, and the more urgent we're going to be about trying to communicate that option to others and to make sure that others know that we're going to be somewhere forever and we can, we can spend forever experiencing a glory and a joy and a peace and a rest that we can't even imagine here and now. Or we can, or we can spend it in what the Bible calls eternal torment. I don't like God jerking my chain here on earth. I can't even imagine, I can't even, and I can't imagine, don't want to imagine what it would be like to hear God say, get thee from me, I never knew you. And I think if we really believe that we're here for a short while, and then, and then there's all eternity in one of those two places, we're all either going with the goat, or we're going with the sheep, or the chaff, or we're the wheat. I mean, however you, you describe it, we're in heaven, um, with Jesus, with God, with our Father, or we are separated from Him for, forever, the more we internalize that, the more we truly believe that, the more we let that become who we are, I think the more we are going to seek, what does the Bible say, that God is, is cultivating for Himself a, a chosen people, zealous for good works the more we're going to want opportunities to share that good news with others. The more we're going to look for those opportunities, the more we're going to go to God and ask God to reveal to us where those opportunities are so that we can walk in them. Who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. If we've experienced the Holy Spirit, then... This is true. This is all absolutely true whether we've experienced the Holy Spirit or not. Okay? But if we have experienced the Holy Spirit, then that is, that is the seal. That is the confirmation. That is the absolute affirmation that we can believe every bit of this and that we can go to God ourselves and ask God to reveal to us those works He's prepared for us, those people He's, he's, he's going to set in our path that we can that we can share the good news with them, share the name of Jesus with them.